The M113 armored personnel carrier was first introduced to the U.S. military in 1960. Apart from the U.S. Army, it has been adopted as the primary battlefield transportation vehicle by over 40 countries, including Italy, Germany, Canada, France, Denmark, Israel, and South Korea. The standard personnel configuration is 11 plus 2. Although the U.S. military has planned to replace the outdated M113 with the new armored multipurpose vehicle since 2020, the projected production rate of 3,000 vehicles over 20 years is relatively slow compared to the total number of M113. As of now, the M113 remains the most widely produced armored transport vehicle in the world, with a total production of over 80,000 units of various models. It has been used for various purposes, from transporting infantry to carrying small nuclear weapons. Even in the 21st century, it continues to serve multiple countries. So, what makes this M113 armored personnel carrier from the previous century so reliable and trusted by many? During World War I, it was common to see soldiers advancing alongside tanks on foot. One reason was to reduce infantry casualties, and another was to enable immediate occupation of enemy positions once the tanks broke through the defensive lines. After World War I, the development theory advocated by Heinz Guderian, stating that forces operating in conjunction with tanks must be mechanized, led Germany to quickly establish the world's first armored transport unit centered around the SDK FZ-250 half-track vehicle. This initiative gave German ground forces a significant advantage in the early stages of Blitzkrieg during World War II. The perfect combination of armored transport vehicles and tanks began to be emulated by other countries at that time. After World War II, the FMC Corporation in the United States produced 6,300 M59 armored personnel carriers for the U.S. Army. In the 1960s, with the improved mobility of second-generation main battle tanks, new tactical and technical requirements emerged for armored transport vehicles. In 1956, FMC Corporation started the design of the M113 armored vehicle based on the U.S. Army's requirements for a new generation of armored personnel carriers. The U.S. Army sought a vehicle that could be air transportable, cost-effective, highly reliable, and easily adaptable for different purposes. After four years of development, the T-113 armored vehicle was finalized as the M-113 armored personnel carrier and was officially deployed in the U.S. military in 1960. The early version of the M-113 armored transport vehicle had a length of 4.863 meters, a width of 2.686 meters, a height of 2.5 meters, an empty weight of 8.96 tons, a combat weight of 11.2 tons, a crew of two, and could carry 11 passengers. It was powered by a Chrysler 75 M8 gasoline engine with 209 horsepower and used a General Motors Allison TX200 transmission with two forward gears and one reverse gear. It had a maximum land speed of 64.37 km per hour and a maximum water speed of 5.6 km per hour. The maximum range was 321 km. The vehicle body was made of welded aluminum alloy and could withstand 7.62 mm light machine gun bullets. From the data above, it can be seen that the primary focus of the vehicle was simplicity and ease of production. Its role was similar to that of the German armored transport vehicles during World War II. The tanks were responsible for dealing with potential threats, while the M113 was responsible for transporting infantry. In other words, its main purpose was troop transport. Since the M113 was not designed for direct combat, the requirements for protection were not very high. Although the aluminum alloy armor of the M113 had a maximum thickness of 31.75 mm on the front, its defensive capability was equivalent to 9.53 mm of steel armor. It could only withstand light weapons and shell fragments. It was equipped with a single 12.7 mm Browning M2 HB machine gun, which pales in comparison to tank cannons. Especially after the experience of the Vietnam War, its limitations became more apparent. 
Since its deployment on the battlefield, the M113 has quickly proved unsuitable for frontline combat. Not only could it be penetrated by heavy machine guns like the DSHK machine gun, but even the AK-47 could penetrate its side armor at close range. In the jungle environment, where the enemy could be encountered at a very close distance, relying solely on a single M2 machine gun was insufficient to address all threats. In such situations, the personnel inside the armored vehicle either had to risk charging out or wait inside, facing a highly passive situation. After learning from these initial lessons, the M113 underwent its first transformation. The U.S. military replaced some of the M2 machine guns on certain M113S with 4.2-inch mortars, creating the M106 mortar carrier. Around 10 platoons of these armored mortar carriers were deployed in Vietnam alongside multiple mechanized infantry battalions to provide indirect fire support. Due to the absence of firing ports, the personnel inside the vehicle couldn't engage in combat from within. In comparison, military Humvees could at least open windows for external firing. The M113, on the other hand, could only open the rear door and combat readiness could only be achieved once all personnel disembarked. In this regard, the M113 was even less capable than military Humvees. Although the firepower and protection of the M113 were enhanced by the U.S. military during the later stages of the Vietnam War, such as adding additional armor around the 12.7mm heavy machine gun mount and installing shields for M60 machine guns on the roof, or replacing the 12.7mm heavy machine guns with 20mm multiple barrel Gatling guns, these improvements were still insufficient to handle frontline firepower. Therefore, most of the later M113S were used for low-intensity combat and transportation tasks, such as supplying the second line, medical duties, vehicle repairs, mortar carriers, and reconnaissance missions. Judging from the completion of these tasks, the M113 was considered adequate. The M113 played a crucial role in forced reconnaissance, search and destroy missions, and large-scale marches in the later stages of the Vietnam War. For example, on May 1, 1970, when U.S. forces entered Cambodia, as well as in 1971 when they entered Laos, all ground forces used the M113 for mobility. The M113 often worked in conjunction with U.S. M48 Patton tanks and M551 Sheridan tanks when fighting alongside cavalry and armored units. In addition to the U.S. military and the People's Army of Vietnam, the Australian Army also used the M113 in Vietnam. Similar to the experiences of the U.S. military, M113 crew commanders were highly vulnerable to enemy fire. After experimenting with different shields and turrets, the Australians eventually standardized the M113 with either 2.30 caliber Browning machine guns or a Cadillac gauge T-50 turret. There were also variants with Saracen armored car turrets and others equipped with 76mm cannons for fire support, among others. From the above information, although the combat capabilities of the M113 are not strong, its attributes for transportation and troop transfer are unquestionable. In addition to the bolted-on mine-resistant armor on the front lower hull of the vehicle, as well as the side float boxes, combination bulldozers slash mine plow, nuclear, biological, and chemical detection equipment, all these devices combined further enhanced the survival protection for the crew. For an armored personnel carrier, its main role is to transport personnel and some weapons and equipment on the battlefield. As long as it has a certain level of protection, battlefield mobility, adaptability to the environment, and the ability to support infantry in rapid advances, it is considered sufficient. As long as the vehicle can still run, there is no need for frequent replacements. Therefore, up to the present day, there are numerous modified versions of the M113 armored vehicle. Some have removed the vehicle's roof and converted it into an open-top configuration, while others have added reactive armor to the front and sides of the hull, completely transforming its appearance. Israel took a more direct approach and converted the M113 into a radar carrier, and there are also M113-based Tammuz missile launchers and other variants. In conclusion, regardless of the modifications made, the M113's purpose is not to charge into the front lines. 
The nickname Battlefield Taxi directly reflects its versatility in rear area operations. As of now, the M113 continues to perform well in the logistics aspect in Ukraine. According to the U.S. military's plans, this type of transport vehicle will remain in service until 2030. By now, it should be clear to everyone why the M113 has endured for so long. Firstly, its replaceability is not strong. Secondly, the M113 itself has a simple structure, stable performance, and strong adaptability as a multi-purpose tracked amphibious armored vehicle. It can easily handle various environments, such as mountains, plains, swamps, urban warfare, and water. Its reliability is unquestionable. Furthermore, with the advancement of technology, various countries have continuously upgraded and modified the M113. These upgrades include onboard radar, night vision devices, active protection armor, and firepower options that have evolved from machine guns to autocannons, mortars, tank guns, multiple rocket launchers, towed missiles, flamethrowers, and more. The modified M113 not only retains its reliable performance but also adapts to new battlefield environments, fully meeting the daily requirements of armies around the world.